from allmediareviews.blogspot.com and this is the second uh, music collection video. It was originally going to be just music vinyls, vinyls, and which primarily I think will be vinyls, but there's still a lot of other things like compact discs and other things just to, to show off or just <laughs> for dictation and documentation's sake. Uh, when I'm well gone from this earth, maybe this stuff can be insured or preserved and whatever. Anyway, so I'm just going to get on to it. Um, so this isn't any vinyl. I'm not showing any vinyl, um, but mostly compact discs of the rare variety. Some of, I mean, I have a lot of compact discs I've been collecting for, you know, a better part of 20 plus years, but um, this is uh, at least some of my favorites and rare, more rare items, but, you know, I'm probably missing some stuff, so I'll probably try to do some uh, more, another video or two with these as well, so. All right, and it's not just compact discs, so I'm just going to show a few things here. This right here is my Ours, the band Ours Black Card, which I bought, I think, two, two or three years, 2011, 2012, I think it was 2012, pretty sure. So, and it's good for five years. I'm not sure if we're going to have the opportunity to renew it, so it gives you, uh, you know, Access to certain events, uh, meet and greets, that kind of thing. Sign, you know, we don't have to pay extra for that. But um, I've only been able to use it twice, I think, because uh, there was an online stream with Jimmy Necco um, earlier in 2000, in 2014, and then uh, the one show, show I did see since I picked this up, I didn't have to pay for a meet and greet. But anyway, that's the black card. And along those lines, this is, this is. My, uh, my, the Deer Hunter Lifetime Membership Pass, you know, it gives you all the access, it's got a picture of me on it, and a message from Casey in this print, and, uh, it even has, right there, <laughs> Kimbra, I got to sign, except, actually, she's a, a fan of the Deer Hunter, I just wanted to show her, so I was wearing this when I saw, I met her for the first time, but it says exclusive, Restrictions includes any and all festival performances, which I'm not entirely sure that's the case. But anyway, that's what it says. Must be a deer, a deer hunter headlining show to qualify. Again, that's not necessarily 100% uh, the time, but it might be uh, for the most part. Intended at least when this we picked this up. Uh, there was only 250 of them, I believe. Uh, pass works on a first come first serve RSVP basis. A maximum of 10 passes. Are allowed per show. You must RSVP to, and they give you the email, to have your name added to the list for each show you plan to attend. So, lifetime. And, uh, anyway. And it has a picture of myself. Of course, they wanted a photo to put the, to make, they call them a laminate. And then this, this isn't anything specific about a band or anything like that, but I picked this, I got this, I received this, thankfully. Thanks to the members of Ben Sinister when I was in Chicago, it was kind of significant to see Ben Sinister for the first time in Chicago. And they did a, a filming at this uh, JBTV, I believe what it's called. Um, it's just like a local access kind of thing, an online internet archive of live performances in a studio. Um, but yeah, I got to watch the filming of that, that performance, and then I saw Ben Sinister later that, that night, and I got to hang out with him. So this is the pass I just kind of kept just for sentimental... Uh, and more m m memorium uh, sake for that that trip to Chicago a couple of years ago in 2013, which is now a couple of years ago. So, um, well, I'm just a fan of the Deer Hunter. I actually have the Migrant Pass. Not a huge deal, but I would guess not too many of these were available. So I was figured I'd show that. Um, all right, let's let me bring this stack over here. I want to make sure these are all together, though. Um, I have a couple of these hours uh, promo CDs. This is from Precious, from the forthcoming album. It's let's see here, Leaves, uh, an edit of the, the song Leaves and Kill the Band, um, off of uh, the second hours record, uh, Precious, which came out in two thousand two, which. Hey, I'm not sure how rare these are, and if you're not a fan of ours, obviously it's not really anything special. Bands have promo singles all the time, but 
I believe I received these as part of my final compensation with the Pledge Music on the last R's record, um, Ballet of the Boxer 1. Um, part of the, the Pledge Music campaign, one of the, the extra incentives were, we're getting these, so um, with the vinyl and some other things. And then the second thing I got, I believe, with that was uh, Distorted Lullabies, uh, the single Sometimes, and I'm a Monster's the B-side, which, uh, again, not like super, super rare, but um, in my case, sometimes, in some ways, is my favorite hour song, but uh, this also came with the Pledge Music campaign. So... And I haven't opened this, but, and now it's not as rare as it once was, except this particular copy I got from Japan. This is the Reina Kendo's first EP. Now, I think they just reprinted it, and so that's why it's not as rare as it was. But it was out of print for at least uh, four or five years at least, because I, when I first got into them, I don't think it was available in 2008, 2009, so... Uh, this came out, I think, in 2007, 2006, 2007. The members did, most of the members were in a band called This Day and Age, and then they formed the Reign of Kindo, and the first album came out in 2008, Rhythm, Chord, and Melody, but, but this is Japanese also, so I haven't opened it, I'm on the fence about even opening it, but I didn't probably pay an arm and a leg for it, thankfully, for the longest time, the only place you could find it was on some of the sites like eBay and Discogs.com, but I got it through the Amazon Marketplace, <clears throat> because I couldn't uh, find it for a reasonable price recently, but and, but they had it at shows, and I obviously hadn't been able to see the Rain Kindle live. They played in Chicago and some other upper Midwest towns, but uh, not in Minneapolis. Uh, but they have been selling this, uh, they reissued it and selling it at shows. Some people consider this their best work or their favorite. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a very liked EP, but that was the first thing they ever released, so. But the Japanese version, a um, little bio on it, and I don't know, I'm on the fence. I probably should just open it, but I mean, I have it digitally too, so. Um, this guy, again, not sure how rare this is, um, but I did find it. I think it was like half price books. It, or no, it was cheapo a few years back. It's the a box single with an edit from King's X uh, from the Ear Candy period in 2000, 1996. Got Looking for Love, the the, sta sta the studio version, and then Freedom, which uh, was a song they recorded that didn't make it on to Ear Candy uh, in 1996, but um, I'm pretty sure it was 96. I don't want to be mistaken on the year of that, but um, it did eventually get released. I don't know if it was re-recorded. I think it probably was uh, for uh, Ogre Tones in 2005, but... So, yeah, I mean, not, not super, super rare, but somewhat rare. I mean, I love King's X, and anything I find that's even relatively rare I, I, that I don't have a copy of, I would pick up. Um, so, all right. Uh, I hope I know what exactly is in here. Some stuff in here that probably... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A bootleg of some kind was included in there. I put that... All right, so this is this is something I definitely kind of regard as important. This is the Apes and Androids Knights of the Week compact disc sim single, uh, which came out, I think, if I'm not mistaken, after the album Blood Moon came out in 2008. It may have even been 2009. So it's like a promo. I found it, I believe I found it on eBay. And... I'll fully admit that they did release Riverside as a like a seven inch or a ten inch forty five. It was a seven inch, and I didn't buy it because it was like thirty dollars. But and I should I should monitor. I really should monitor uh, um, eBay for that kind of thing. But I don't. I didn't get it. And the one Apes and Androids item that I do not have. So, um, but anyway. Here's my, another copy of Blood Moon. I have another copy in a bag over there. <laughs> I'm not going to show the one that I've worn out left and right, but this is a really hard to find anyways, Apes and Androids, Blood Moon. One of my favorite records of all time. Favorite albums ever from 2008. But um, this, as you can see, I kept, I've kept it sealed. Uh, if you ever find a copy, you're finding something rare <laughs> at this point. But... And then among the Apes and Android stuff, I thought I'd also show 
something really, really rare. I don't know. I, I looked for this for about three years online and eventually did find it. The Call Florence Powell's second album, these are the, not these are the plans, um, The Strange Situation. I would, uh, <laughs> you'd be hard pressed to find this. I mean, maybe. You'd have a better chance probably finding one of those singles. I remember looking for this over and over again. This is a tremendous EP. Um, it has creepy girls on it and has, uh, was it, Preparation for Battle. Every, every song on here, it's just why I love Apes and Androids um, and Call Florence Pow, as they were known then, but the two guys from Apes and Androids eventually were originally known as Call Florence Pow. I do have their debut album, These Are the Plans, as well. I didn't, uh, I didn't have that at the moment to show in front of the camera, but that is only sort of rare. I mean, you can find it. Uh, I've seen it in stores, but I have only purchased one copy. Anyway. Alright, so on to a couple of other things. Yeah, I think I'll save that for the last. Choice items. Actually, this is probably worth what would be worth next showing. I have a couple of small, what do they call these, super mini CDs or something like that. First is, which came with the sort of box set of vinyl, Maudlin of the Well reissued. This is the Secret Song, and it has Secret Song Live. I don't know what this is, about three inches? Something like that, two, three, it's maybe three inches, but it's it's a little CD. And um, it came with a, I think it came with a download as well, but look at how small that guy is. But uh, you only, I believe, could get this version of it. I think I actually do have the vinyl, too. There's a 7-inch vinyl of this, which... That will be saved for another video, I think. So, But then I also, like, had, then misplaced, then found again. Um, I got this way back in 1997, my Dream Theater fandom. The Take Away My Pain demo version and Speak To Me demo version little mini CD, whatever it was. This came with the one of the Japanese version of Falling Into Infinity. And I was such a fanboy nerd that I had to have it. <laughs> I wanted to have every song. Um, and, you know, you think about Falling Into Infinity, uh, which I'll totally tell you, I have now on vinyl, but, um, and I have the Christmas CD. I, I don't have my Christmas CD in front of you to, me to show you. It's in a book, actually, but... Uh, from that period, 1999, where they had all the take the Falling Into Infinity uh, extra songs that were supposed to be on it, um, called the Clean Up the Closet. Um, but I figured that some of those songs could have been on here, um, but they weren't. Like Raise the Knife, I, I maybe when I bought this, I thought maybe Raise the Knife was going to be on it. I didn't have the information. I know it said Falling Into Infinity Japanese with bonus mini CD or super mini CD or something like that. So, and these these things these whatever they are, two and, two and a half, three inches uh, thing of a pass, especially with the way CD is going. I don't know if, although <laughs> everything's cyclical, it seems like, since cassettes are almost starting to come back a little bit. Maybe in 20 years, especially the way things are getting smaller, they might start issuing CDs again on a somewhat regular basis after vinyl and the digital thing has completely become totally mainstream, if it does. And maybe for, for size sake, they'll start to make these things uh, in this size, because we always want to save size, but... Model of the Well and Dream Theater. And I actually do have a copy of... Another copy I found at like a half-price book, because I was falling into Infinity. If I ever can track that down, maybe I'll show it as well. Um, anyway, so... Now on to... to Kevin Gilbert. I don't have my copy of... Uh, this DVD, but this is the golden ticket that... There was like one... I believe one copy they were giving away when they re when they issued. Well, I can't remember which one the estate what the estate was doing, but it was one copy of the Shaman of the True book, the original printing book, one or two of them, and that's what the golden ticket was. And this, I believe, has a number. Or no, I take that back. They had a number when they issued the live DVD for um, Live at Troubadour. They had, you got like a thing you had to send in, I remember that now, and it had a number. You could have kept it, I decided to send it in because I wanted it, and I think what the giveaway was was the Shaman of the True um, book, but I'm not, my memory's a little bit 
fa uh, gray in that particular detail. But this just says, Gilbert's Golden Ticket. Uh, good for one chance at winning an autographed copy of the draft seat. Okay, I totally now didn't read it. But there was some, there was a con there was some sort of giveaway or contest for that the shaming book the original shaming the shaming of the true book but this was for a autograph copy of the original draft draft CD from 1987 it would have been uh, I believe the power of suggestion yep power of suggestion send this ticket along with your name address and email to this gives an address in California original tickets only copies will not be accepted all entries must be postmarked this was March third thirty first two thousand ten. Draft will be held in April 2010. If you want your ticket back, yeah, see that's what I remember. Just gotta read Kyle. <laughs> but yeah, this this is a, a, a copy of when he played June 1st, 1995 at at the actual Troubadour. So so along with the that with the Kevin Gilbert albums, I thought I'd show this. These are just my two promo or special edition copies of Toy Matinee, which comes with a book with a write up and everything from. Oh, I, got, I should remember. Was it, was it wasn't Mark Bonilla, was it? I don't remember. Lyrics, of course, too. Um, Mark and Brian from KLOS. If you know Kevin Gilbert. And on the, on the, the beginning part was from Patrick Leonard, half, half, one half of Toy Matinee, talking about Kevin. These are... Well, they were used. I'm not, I don't know how exactly how rare. And Toy Matinee isn't super, super rare, the CD, but... Um, it's sort of rare, but you know you'll see it once in a blue moon if you really look for CDs. But and the, spe the special edition, which comes with some demos and edits, um, and I think it comes with yeah, blank page. I think was on here, which came out on the compilations, the nuts and bolts was one of one of those compilations in 2009 also. But these were in the early part of the the, the 2000s. Anyway. Cool deal, you know. I have two copies. I, I don't know if I'll ever part with one of them, maybe at some point, but now a few more, a few more um, rare Kevin items. First is a this is a, I don't know when I found this, it was very recently, a promotional copy of Thud. You can see. Actually, I wonder if any of the promos actually, the song uh, Shadow Self was called Late for Dinner, but um, and we're gonna. Yeah, it is. I, I didn't look at this clearly. It does say late for dinner. Um, but comp compliments of image, I'm not sure why it says that. But yes, this is a promo, which is one of, I can count three copies I own of Thud, although one of them is a little scratched. So, all used, sadly. But uh, the state's looking to release vinyl and three CD uh, anniversary edition in, in sometime in 2015, early, probably in January, early February, but it's January uh, 6th, 7th now. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear about something in the next few weeks. And then also maybe some of these documentary videos, we'll see. All right, and then these are probably as, if not more rare than that. Um, the three compact disc singles from the Toy Matinee these are promotional CD singles. This was there was a little boy, which has there was a little boy the album version and an edit um, from Toy Matinee, the ballad of Jenny Ledge. Uh, it has the long edit, short edit with an intro, and then the album version. I mean, just for you know, it has some artwork on the back as you can see. In terms of rare material, there's not a lot of rare material. But then here's Last Plane Out uh, with an edit and the album version. Yeah. Just as a, these are promotional. These are promos. You know, just for like you know collector's sake. If you collect all your favorite favorites from one artist, that would be it. So I would I would snatch those up. That's why I found them on I think it was Amazon Marketplace. So and then. I'll just show this again. This is, I think, still available. So in terms of rarity, it's not as rare, but it's a very cool deal. Being this is like my second favorite album of all time for various reasons, and it was supposed to be. It, the plan was it was going to be released as a vinyl. I'll fully admit, at the time, I did not put out the hundred bucks they wanted for it, and I should have. But we needed a lot of people to, to actually give the state the confidence. This was back in 2011, I think it was. 2011, 2012. It was just a few years ago. 2012. But so instead of releasing it on vinyl, the shaming of the true, they released it as a. Um, oh, I just thought about something. But 
They released it as a uh, as a like a box set CD, a CD box set rather. Um, and well, this is a job to, to move in and out. I know because I want to be careful with it. But it, you know, it has yes. Here we go. Which this also includes um, Long Day's Life with the orchestra, the orchestral arrangement, and then a narrative from a, a guy, a reader on it on, on the second CD, the, com the com complimentary disc, whatever you want to call that. But um, and I believe it's one of the third or fourth time it's been remastered because there was the original. Then I think two thousand. 2000. No, the original came out in the year 2000, and at least one one came out in 2008, and then one I think between 2000 and 2008 there was another one, on just on compact disc. Um, this has, of course, all the lyrics, and then these this artwork that was a big deal for it. So I could probably oh yeah, and then to, to the score for a long day's life, I could probably spend a whole video just on shaming of the true, which at some point maybe I will. <laughs> Um, but, so, yeah, the Johnny Virgil story, some of the songs, and you can sort of follow along when you see the, uh, the photos and stuff like that when, when you listen to the music. And, you know, The Shaman of the True, one of those versions, but not the original book book, that came with this stuff, but the, the one, the first one I got has a book in it also, um, that shows it, and I should actually have that together with this, but I don't, and... I'll fully admit I I'm actually misplaced that when I when I eventually clean everything up around here, that may show up. But <laughs> for now, I always think of off to join the circus. You know, best laid plans. You should see the elephant there. So for those who who did who didn't pick who don't have this and didn't pick this up, I think there is a video. There is, in fact, I know on YouTube that shows. A fair amount of this. It's a cool video. It's a very cool video. Right up by Central Wilson, who's written a bunch of articles and obviously was very knew Kevin quite well, Kevin Gilbert. But um, so this is what it what it looks like. And the success of the Thud vinyl, presumably, it's going to happen in the next few weeks or months, could lead to finally this being released on uh, vinyl at some point. So I would have two cases, I would probably keep the two of them together, so. Um, which reminds me, I'm going to quickly get something and be back. I didn't even think about this, but yes, and here's my copy of Toy Matinee. I was going to only stick this to CDs, but, you know, we're talking about rare Kevin Gilbert stuff. This is Koi Matinee. This is very difficult to find on vinyl, and I was fortunate enough that when after I saw Kevin Gilbert, um, uh, the Kevin Gilbert, uh, the Shame of the True Tribute show from the, the Champions of Nothing, a uh, fellow in Wisconsin had two copies, and I bought him a t-shirt, and he ended up having two copies, and he sent, sent me one for the exchange for that. That was really great of him. And this came with this promotional thing that I transcribed onto my blog. This is from, like, 1990. 89 or 90, it tells the story of how Kevin Gilbert met Patrick Leonard and when he was in Giraffe and everything that's relatively well documented on the internet and on Kevin Gilbert's site. So, but yes, this is definitely one of my more, more cherished vinyls. I mean, the actual record itself, not anything highly, you know, irregular or, or unique, but you know, this is Kevin Gilbert's, uh, the, the one really... Kim Gilbert item I have on vinyl uh, of, of his main music. I have Madonna's, uh, the soundtrack to Dick Tracy, which he produced, and even Michael Jackson's uh, Black or White, which he also was a, he did engineering on, so he didn't produce the Madonna thing, but he just, he did engineering on, so, but I just figured, I just, at the last moment, figured that might be worth sharing, that goes along with, um, all this uh, rare Kevin Gilbert stuff that I'm showing here in this video, so. Alright, now, once I get this thing taken care of, which this would probably warrant going into a, another video of rare vinyls, but I don't know if I'm going to be doing it just specifically for rarity's sake. 
I will show maybe my most valued or unique item. This is for all, um, for all everybody. Jeff, the one and only apparently Jeff Buckley, <laughs> that uh, the late great Jeff Buckley, like Kevin Gilbert's compact disc copy copy of uh, Led Zeppelin IV. It's obviously if you look at it, it's just a standard copy of what one of the first issues back in like the '80s, I think. 87, 88 when this originally was printed. Uh, I think it was, well, it says 71, but that was the year that Led Zeppelin IV came out, the Ruins album, but as you can see, it says the GB stamp of approval for his estate, and then, you know, here's the, the thing, GBM, the address I got it from. I got it from this contest that they were advertising online through Jeff Buckley's, one of the, the Jeff Buckley Network site and his mom is Mary Guevara involved with but um and this is the certificate yeah august 30th 2009 i, I picked this and it has mary Gibert's signature jeff buckley's mother private from the private music library of jeff buckley and led zeppelin 4 among how many compact discs he has there's videos some of his videos like hot documentary for, for showing him with his book of cds but um led zeppelin 4 led zeppelin was a huge influence on jeff buckley so this guy in all, all possibility was a very <laughs> significant and favorite compact disc of his. I'm sure he, because he, at the age, he probably had it on vinyl. But, um, you know, and maybe not, it's not, I mean, Led Zeppelin too. you know, he was listening to, I think it was Ramble On when, when the whole thing happened in the river, in the, the Wolf River in Memphis. But, um, uh, you know, whatever. This is one of, you know, 500 compact discs that Jeff Buckley had that were uh, as significant as uh, to him in terms of practicality for his him as a musician, as a singer, and a, a guitarist. So that that's why this is kind of unique. I mean, it is just a copy of, you know, Led Zeppelin two, Led Zeppelin four rather. But I don't think it, there's anything in the book other than again the stamp that that uh, whoever runs his estate. I don't know if it was exactly his mother who did that, but yeah, you know, I, I think I have a copy of it. It's just Led Zeppelin four, but. Most copies of Love's Up and Four don't have this uh, JSB uh, library of it's a library of JSB. Um, so I don't know how much in terms of monetary value this would go by, but I'm sure there's a fan or two out there that is obsessed with Jeff much more than I am, and I love Jeff Buckley. Um, that would probably <laughs> love to have this, but at this point, I, I don't think I'm going to part with it. But uh, you never know. So. Well, that's about it for now, but um, I may continue with some of these in the near future, in the next week or two months, I'm not sure. I am working on a 2014-2015 preview uh, entry in my blog, and I'm pretty sure I'll try doing a video or two for that, So, um, but uh, and then maybe some more vinyl videos, maybe some other stuff I have my Daniel Klaus graphic novel collection for the non-music <laughs> person and some other stuff I might show. I don't know, but we'll see. But thanks for watching regardless.